Welcome to the CQN Podcast, A Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes and once again I'm joined by Kevin Graham and we're in the toll booth in Stirling recording In Session with Kevin Miles. Absolutely delighted to have you on the show, Kevin. Thanks very much for coming along. My pleasure to be here, mate. Um, so this song's called Celtic, My Heart and My Soul. Um, it's out in aid of the Celtic Foundation charity. It's 99 pence on iTunes. Everyone's got a quid in their wallet, so get it bought. It's for a worthy cause. Um, the club are obviously behind an initiative to try and support families, especially up to Christmas, um, to put food on tables for people who can't provide otherwise. Um, so, yeah, don't just listen to it. Get on the iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, pick it up and, uh, and support the foundation. Celtic, 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 my heart and my soul I followed the teams of the past and watched history unfold Going to Parkhead with my dad and my brother It's true what they say, we're a club like no other The colours that flow through my veins are all green, white and gold the sun it shines down as we're walking along London Road The Green Brigade burst into song and the jungle explodes So what does it mean to be Celtic and how does it feel? To pull on the hoops and be fearless like Billy McNeil Celtic, 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 my heart and my soul I followed the teams of the past and watched history unfold Going to Parkhead with my dad and my brother It's true what they say, we're a club like no other The colours that flow through my veins are all green, white and gold they came in their thousands to Lisbon and Jock had a plan He understood football was nothing without the fans We went to go down before Gemmell and Chalmers would save us Our jerseys don't fit second best or inferior players Oh, Celtic, 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 my heart and my soul I followed the teams of the past and watched history unfold Going to Parkhead with my dad and my brother It's true what they say, we're a club like no other The colours that flow through my veins are all green, white and gold Celtic, 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 my heart and my soul I followed the teams of the past and watched history unfold Going to Parkhead with my dad and my brother It's true what they say, we're a club like no other The colours that flow through my veins are all green, white and gold We've just heard the Celtic Charity Foundation single. How did that come about? Just basically, the day after the Scottish Cup final, obviously, there, I don't think there was a Celtic fan on the planet at that moment in time that wasn't completely in elation with what had actually happened through over the course of the season. And um, I woke up the next morning with an absolute banger of a headache. Um, I'd been out the night, the night of the, the day of the game, went out afterwards, met my wife, we're out two or three o'clock in the morning, woke up. And it was just basically a means to try and kind of keep my mind off the fact that I was going to be sick. And uh, I picked up the guitar and I just I, I, when I woke up, I kind of had this melody in my head and I thought it was maybe already a song. Um, and as I racked my brain and racked my brain, I was like, no, nah, this is this is something new. Um, started to kind of put down... I had, the, I had the chorus in my head. I knew what I wanted to do and then it was just kind of tying it together. Um, and originally it was like three verses and then I sent... I recorded it on my phone and sent it to on WhatsApp to my my dad and Craig, and um, my dad's not the type of guy that would celebrate mediocrity. And he came back to me and he was like, 
Kevin, this is fucking brilliant. Like, you need to do something with this. So I recorded that when I went down to Inner Sound Studios in York. And at that point, it was like going to approach the club about it and see if they want to do something for the foundation. Because I'd kind of seen snippets of what they were doing last season, like the sleep out at Celtic Park and all the stuff that they've been doing for the project over in Malawi. And it was just like, this is things that people do and sponsored cycles and all that. I'm not active at all. I couldn't run the length of myself. But I thought if I could bring something to the table that they'd be able to benefit from, then let's see if they want to become involved. So I spoke to Tony Hamilton um, and he was like, we've got something that's already in the pipeline, but how do you fancy like we'll make this like the song for the Christmas appeal? To sit on it for a period of three or four months then was a really, really difficult thing to do because I was absolutely bursting to get it out. I wanted it to be ready for the start of the season. It was the whole 50-year anniversary of Lisbon. Obviously, it's a, a massive part of the song. Um, and it just kind of clicked into place. We got a music video. The, the club were amazing. They let us into the grounds to film in the dressing room. And I got to sit in my, my seat, like my season ticket, um, and do like a sort of performance thing. And then it all kind of get tied together with... Footage from London Road, walking down, my dad, Craig, Craig's uh, wee boy, Kieran, who was born a couple of months ago. So uh, it's like four generations of Celtic supporters all in this video, and it's there for all the world to see for generations to come, you know. So that's kind of where it was born from. Um, As a failed songwriter and somebody who's <laughs> uh, tried to write quite a few football songs, the problem that I always seemed to have was the lyrics were really, really cheesy. Mm-hmm. You can, it's like trying to write a Christmas song, which I have tried to do as well and failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing, the, the version that you played there, I think is better than the recorded version. I think that, that version was fantastic. But how did you come up with the lyrics? Was it natural? Was it just, was it always in your back of your mind that I need to watch what I'm doing here? Because some of them, I must admit, and this is not going to sound too good, but see Four Leaf Clover. I don't like that. I think the lyrics are a bit. Uh, I don't know. Just doesn't do nothing for me. Eh? But how, how did you? How did you come up with the lyrics? Um, as I said, I kind of woke up and I had the. And it's quite old fashioned, you know. It's maybe like kind of thing like my papa would have listened to back in the day. Um, that has got that. Key, yeah, it's got an old, an old, an old kind of vibe uh, to it. And I, when I wrote it, um, I'd kind of tied it in with. I wanted to talk about Lisbon, but I wanted to keep it timeless as well, you know, because there was lots of things that I could have said about the current squad, but there's guys in that team who were sensational last season, like Sir Paddy Roberts. How long are we going to be blessed with Paddy's presence? You know, he's maybe a couple of years of flash in the pan. Are people going to be talking about Paddy Roberts in 50 years' time? No, but Billy McNeil and Tommy Gemmo, Stevie Chalmers are still going to be on the tip of every Celtic fan's tongue in another 50 years' time, so I wanted to keep it a journey but again, like you say, not not get cheesy, and it is something that's frustrating about um, about some Celtic songs that you hear, and it's just like that's cringe. Just delete that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think the timeless aspect comes with the subject matter you're talking about walking down the London Road with your dad and your brother. That'll happen for generations to come, yep. and I think that's what really grabs everybody. It's not just. You're not just singing about a certain point in time. You're you're, mm-hmm. you're speaking about an event that happens every single every second week, and it'll happen. Yep. It's happened for generations and generations. And I think this is why you, that your song's one of the best Celtic songs ever written, because it because <laughs> it actually grabs, actually takes that moment and brings it to life. This next song's become a staple at Celtic Park over the years. Um, you hear the Green Brigade singing it, scarves held high. Um, it's obviously a poignant song, and it ties in with the club's roots in its history um, the song's called Grace As we gather in the chapel here in old Kilmainham jail I think about these past few weeks or will they say we failed from our school days They have told us we must yearn for liberty Yet all I want in this dark place Is to have you here with me Oh Grace, just hold me in your arms And let this moment linger They'll take me out 
at dawn and I will die With all my love I place this wedding ring upon your finger There won't be time to share our love for we must say goodbye Now I know it's hard for you my love to ever understand the love I bear for these brave men my love for the steel land but when portrait called me to his side down in the GPO I had to leave my own sick bed to him I had to go Oh, Grace, just hold me in your arms and let this moment linger. They'll take me out at dawn and I will die. With all my love, I place this wedding ring upon your finger. There won't be time to share our love for we must say goodbye Now as the dawn is breaking my heart is breaking too On this May morn as I walk out my thoughts will be of you And I'll write some words upon the wall so everyone will know I love so much that I could see his blood upon the rose. Oh, Grace, just hold me in your arms and let this moment linger. They'll take me out at dawn and I will die. With all my love, I place this wedding ring upon your finger. There won't be time to share our love, for we must say goodbye. No, in a previous life, uh, <laughs> you, you were in a band called Yashin, and I don't know if any of our podcast listeners would have heard of Yashin, but you were described as a uh, metalcore. No, I, I, I listened to yourselves and if I was being lazy I would probably say it was a bit uh, uh, Lincoln Park Aye. Would, 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 would be, It's better, it, than, better than some of the descriptions I've had over the years of take Lincoln Park right? Aye. <laughs> the, the reason I say Lincoln Park is when I moved when I moved in with my wife MTV2 only put, seemed to play two songs one of them was Baseman Jack's Where's Your Head At another one was Lincoln Park when they were on top of an Aztec big in the end in the end that's it aye. so that was the only reason that Lincoln Park so it's a bit of a difference for oh, what, what you've done to aye. doing this now 100% I, I, I felt like when I was in Yashin I felt suppressed because I was doing what I was doing I was I was a, a major part of the songwriting process but I just felt like it was we obviously the, the band had this scene and we had a great fall and we, we achieved many great things. We went out and toured with the bands that we grew up with, our posters on the wall, like your Limp Biscuits and Papa Roaches and Corn. we done all over UK. We, um, we toured all over Europe with these bands and it was just a side that I wanted to get out there and it was something I'd threatened to do for a long time was write a Celtic song. The boys that I was in bands with even before Yashin, um, I, I still see all those guys and Everyone's the same, all Celtic daft, and we would maybe make a point. I get done at the caravan once every sort of five or six months and bring the acoustic down. And it was just always a like everybody singing songs like Grace and Celtic songs and whatever else, um, the Foggy Dew and stuff like that. And it was something an outlet that I needed. Um, and I, I just can't believe like the the connection that it's had with the Celtic fans. Like you say that walking down London roads, it's something that's going to be there forever, you know, and the the connection between the jungle and the Green Brigade and just a family connection and the mm-hmm. messages that I've had from 
the supporters as a result of it have been ridiculous. There's, there's part of the footage, um, it was actually a funny story, I tried to um, do everything by the book because it was going to be an official release through the club and everything else. They couldn't take any risks with regards to like copyright or permissions to use materials, so the footage that I wanted to use of the European Cup final... I contacted the company that own it. It's like British Pathy or something like that, the mm. black and white footage of the goals. And um, they were like, oh, yeah, that's something we can do. So I'd explained it was a charity project for the foundation and blah, blah, blah. And they said it's, um, was it a £1,000 per second, minimum <laughs> buy-in of 30 seconds? Oh, and that only lasts five years. And it was like, you're kidding me on. Like, I said, I, I, sorry, I forgot to mention this is for charity. doesn't matter. Um, and eventually I found footage that some someone's gran and granda had taken on a, a camera in Lisbon and contacted him through YouTube um, just to say, can we get permission to use this? He's like, absolutely anything to do with the foundation. And someone who was filmed in that footage sent me a message through YouTube to say, that's me waving the flag at 1 minute 35 seconds. And it made my heart burst, Brilliant. mate, honestly. Brilliant. It was just like... I can't believe it. I've watched that clip so many times and always wondered what happened to the guys that were in it. And here's this guy, maybe in his 20s, waving a tricolour, walking up to the, the, the stadium in Lisbon and it's just like, here he is messaging me 50 years later to say, <laughs> by the way, that's me <laughs> waving the flag. It was just amazing. The guy's over in Calgary, um, m- moved over there. He makes it to the Celtic convention in Vegas every year and he gets home for games whenever he can. But the stories that have come out of it have just been, that's, that's the, the best bit for me. Um, the next one's a Christy Moore number um, I remember being a, a young boy in the car listening to this and my dad playing it through the stereo um, and it's always kind of stuck with me and years later picked it up learned it and uh, this song's called Allende Well the night hawk flies and the owl cries as we're driving down the road Listen to the music on the all-night radio show. The announcer comes on, says if you've got ideas, I'll file a patent for you. What's an idea that's not in the store, making a buck or two? Drive to the town, but the shutters are down and the all night restaurant's closed. It's the land of the free, they've got booze and TV, and there's tramps in the telephone booth. But the stars and the trees and the early spring breeze say, Forget what assassins have done. Take our good soil in the palm of your hands. Wait for tomorrow's sun It's a long way from the heartland To Santiago Bay Where the good doctor lies With blood in his eyes And the bullets reach U.S. of A Well, the truck driver's wife She has a rough life He spends his time on the road Carrying the goods of the copper and wood That's what makes America great But the dollars like swallows They fly to the south When they know they've got something to gain Allende is killed And the trucks are soon rolling again It's a long way from the heartland to Santiago Bay where the good doctor lies with blood in his eyes and the bullets reach U.S. of A. Well, the night hawk flies and the owl cries as we're driving down the road. A full moon reveals all the houses and fields where good people do what they're told. Tahara, he lies with coins in his eyes. There's no one around him to mourn. Who needs a poet who won't take commands? Who'd rather make love than war? 
It's a long way from the heartlands to Santiago Bay, where the good doctor lies with blood in his eyes, and the bullets read U.S. of A. And the bullets read U.S. of A. You know, in the video, there's some home footage as well. Is that right? That's right, yeah. Um, what was your Celtic team growing up? We always talk about, you know, the centenary team being our team because we're roughly the same age. Aye. What was your team growing up? Who, who were your idols? John Collins uh, was was the main man when I was growing up. I missed the centenary season. I was 1984 born, so 88, I was still a wee guy. But my first Celtic game was uh, 1991 against Neuchatel Samax in the European Cup. So we'd been absolutely hammered away from home. And then my dad took me to the home leg and we we won at Celtic Park, but... 1-0? 1-0, yeah. Aye, aye. Um, and who was playing up front when we got beat 5-1? Tony Cascarino. Tony Cascarino, <laughs> aye, he's obviously... <laughs> big, big shout out to uh, Tony, uh, yeah. Aye, <laughs> if he's listening. Headlines for all the wrong reasons, mate. <laughs> um, but I, try, I, I found it hard to grasp at the time, obviously being a young boy, about the aggregate scoreline and how the fact that we'd been pumped away from home meant that we, we were not going to progress. But um, that was just a... There wasn't a lot to cheer about back then. I'd obviously missed the, the the bubble of the centenary season, and then from sort of ninety one through to ninety five, I, I remember being at school and getting excited about the fact that we'd won the the ten at sixes. Like that was as close <laughs> as it got to being a a, a, like a cup winning team. And then in nineteen ninety five against Airdrie in the Scottish Cup final, my dad took us. Me and Craig uh, couldn't get tickets for the home end. It ended up sitting in the away end. Well, big Pierre nodded it in and just had to sit there and horrible, but yes, it's all part of being a Celtic fan, isn't it? You know, you you, you need to have endured what we did through the nineties to be able to appreciate what we've got just now. And I don't know that that song would have been written if it hadn't been for the elation that was caused from coming through last season. You know, it was just unbelievable. I I'll tell you how I certainly found out about it. I don't know if it was the same with yourself, Kevin. David emailed me, David from CQN, saying, listen to this track, it's actually good. right? <laughs> because, you know, what we've spoken about is so many bad football songs get written. And then as soon as we heard it, we said, we need, we need to try and set this up as a session. This last one I'm going to play it was a, a, a difficult decision to kind of make because there's not many Yashin songs that translate well into an acoustic tune. Um this song was written back in 2010 and it became a real self-help anthem amongst the people who were listening to the band at the time. It helped a lot of people out of some real hard times. This one's called Stand Up. And make yourself count Stand up and stop yourself from falling in Stand up and make yourself count Stand up and stop yourself from falling in And pick me up Or I will fall into next week Pick me up And help me hear what they say to me You try but you fall down Then you stay down And there's no help You try but you fall down Then you stay down 
And there's no help for you Stand up and make yourself count Stand up and stop yourself from falling in Stand up and make yourself count Stand up and stop yourself from falling in You try but you fall down Then you stay down And there's no help Stand up and make yourself count Stand up and stop yourself from falling in Stand up and make yourself count Stand up and stop yourself from falling in So that's Kevin, get out and download the track for the Celtic FC Foundation Kevin, on the 18th of November, will be playing live at the Kerrydale Suite for the Disabled Supporters Association. So if you can get along to see him live, uh, you will not be disappointed. Kevin, thank you very much for joining us on a Celtic State of Mind. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Bill. And there we have it. A Celtic State of Mind's first acoustic session. Here's hoping it's the first of many. We'll certainly be asking Kevin miles back in the not-too-distant future. And what a worthwhile cause for releasing a single raising cash at Christmas for the Celtic Foundation. If you enjoyed the show, then get onto our Twitter page at the CQN Podcast, where you can follow a pinned link to all 24 episodes. Last week's show with BAFTA-winning documentary director John McLaverty and Scottish comedian Phil Differ has gone down a storm, so get it downloaded and give it a listen. Next week, we chat to Lisbon Lion Jim Craig for an hour about 1967, Brendan Rogers winning a BAFTA, and his latest book, Right Back to 67, The Lisbon Lion Diary. You can get in touch with me at Paul Dykes, or with Kevin Graham at A Northern Prose. You can also get in touch with at CQN Magazine, and be sure to visit Kevin Miles at Kevin Miles Away. Thank you for listening. As long as you keep listening, we'll keep chatting to people from all walks of life with a Celtic state of mind.